Welcome back. You're watching Political Exchange. I'm Karima Brown. I'm in conversation with the ANC Secretary General, Gwede Mantash, about how the nominations process will work ahead of the, uh, the party's elective conference in December. Uh, Mr. Mantash, one of the criticisms that have come up, not just from uh, people observing the party, but within your structures, is that there's intense contestation about who are the legitimate structures of the ANC. Um, you know, not a day goes by without one reading about so-called parallel structures. In many of your provinces, in the Northwest, we have that problem. In the Free State, I understand that you are being litigated by people who believe that they've been disadvantaged, they weren't allowed to go to the provincial conference. Why is there such intense contestation about wh which branch is actually a real branch of the ANC? Karima, when we went to the National General Council, uh, we spend a lot of time talking about what we call sins of incumbency or the negative tendencies. And what we identify in that process is that the difference between a liberation movement uh, that is out there fighting an illegitimate regime and a, li a liberation movement that ascends to power is that there is a big intersection between holding political office and access to resources. And the, 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 the consequence of that reality is when people fight for life to be elected into position and take control of the organization. That is, the, that is what is a reality in the provinces when you see that intensive fight. Actually, when you dig deep, you find that there is no problem with the processes. There is a, pro a problem with the numbers which camp uh, will win that conference and so forth. And people fight it to death because, uh, not because in the majority of cases, those individuals really are committed to serve because they want to access that so that they can dispense patronage. It's one of the challenges that we're talking about as the ANC all the time because it is a tendency that must be defeated. But SG, the very issues that you're raising are accusations that others are, are lodging at those who are running the organization at the moment. In the case of the Free State, there were large sections of the party who felt that the way in which the uh, provincial conference was run actually disenfranchised. Let me, let me explain this to you. you. You know when you deal with factionalism, Karima, is that every faction will always claim to be representing the organization. It is the others who are a faction. But when they are, when they are factional fights, the reality of the matter is that the interests of the party take a back seat for that moment. And there will be accusation and counter accusation. It reaffirms the view that uh, so half the time those fights are not ideological. They're about now it's our turn, give, give way, it's, it's the next person's turn, give way. And I think it's a turn that must be defeated in the long term. Are you suggesting, SG, that the traditional differences in a broad church like the ANC, which are ideologically driven over issues of policy and orientation, are now being replaced by um, questions of patronage? The reality of the matter is that when you deal with those groupings in all the provinces, you will find a mixed bag, <laughs> ideologically, in all the groupings. You see, uh, even to a, to a level, even if you break it down, you can find out that when you think that maybe it is this grouping uh, fighting with communists, you find that half of that group is communist and half of that are communists. And, and, and therefore, it is not ideological half the time. So it's you, money. It's a you'll find that we agree ideological on a number of issues. That's why when we go and discuss policy, half the time there's no fight, there's no blood in the, on the floor when there is a dispute on policies, we all agree. But then the, the, the fight will begin to be around positions. And to me, that is where the problem is. That's why we must fight the question and the influence of money in the structures of the organization and therefore change the question of election from uh, based on who will dispense what patronage into who will serve the organization and society best. But why is it so easy for those with money and power to wield influence in the African National Congress? I'm not sure if it is easy. I'm not sure if it is easy because if you, you, you will assess uh, any outcome of any conference of the NC, uh, you will get all the allegations that there was this group that has these big bags of money. Re results don't not necessarily all the time reflect that. Uh, because once you begin to do political work and uh, branches begin to understand the, 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 the essence of being a cater of the movement 
it changes the complexion of the competition. Mm -hmm. But people spend money, sometimes it goes down the drain, and they can't be refunded, but that is the reality that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. When I spoke with you last, I asked you what is your prospects for having a successful elective conference, and you said that the ANC's elective conference is not going to be disrupted by um, accusations that credentials are not in order, that you know processes were skipped. What makes you confident about the preparation so far that your conference will in fact be smooth and that people will accept the outcome of the conference, uh, whatever that outcome may be? You see, the first thing is that you can only make a determination by investing time and energy in the processes. Once processes are tight, the risk is reduced in, in the actual conference. Accepting the result or not accepting the result is something that is more internal to the individual. Uh, because there are people who actually take politics uh, with their heart and emotion. Uh, uh, but politics are actually about having fun. If you don't have fun in politics, you'll die young. Heart attack will visit you quick. Politics is about engaging and have fun in politics. And if you, you, you take that route, you'll never stress and almost collapse at the point of a conference or on the announcement of results. Mm -hmm. But we have invested enough time and resources on the processes. That, is, that will reduce any possibility of a chaos in the conference itself. Let me ask you a very direct question, Mr. Mantash. You have been put forward by several uh, provinces and, and PECs as a candidate uh, for the position that you currently hold. If you are nominated, are you going to sign that nomination form? Are you going to accept your nomination? No, no, no. You don't deal with nomination that way. Nobody has come to me and say, here is a nomination form. If that has happened, I would tell you that I have signed that form or I have turned down that form. Now, there is no form that has arrived that nominates me. I don't want to be presumptuous and say I will be nominated. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the stock in trade answer of every single ANC leader that I've ever interviewed. When I interviewed Figile Mbalula, I asked him the very same question and he said, no, 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 uh, the issue of leadership is handled in a principal way. We don't put our hands up, we wait for people to come. Yes. But the reality is that someone is lobbying on behalf of the different factions. Yes. And that has, that has caused a lot of divisions in the organization. Um, we've seen, for example, efforts at uh, character assassination of particular candidates, uh, mudslinging. How does what you're doing at the moment um, not make it more difficult to have an open and a clean contest, if you like? I think lobbying is lobbying. Uh, that is part of democracy. It, once you become dirty with your lobbying, uh, some of us will know that uh, you are just putting stones in your pocket to raise your weight. And it doesn't work in the majority of cases. So the result of the matter is that lobbying is open. Now, people are lobbying each other. People meet and talk and engage and say, we prefer this country over this. In that process, it will give us a smoother conference, actually. So what you're saying is, G, is that lobbying in this period um, uh, by various members of the ANC and provinces um, and their leaderships is perfectly normal and acceptable? You can't have a control over that issue. People must talk to each other because democracy is about influencing and being influenced. Otherwise, if you say people must not influence each other, you are saying they must lock themselves in rooms and take their decision, go to a conference, and then we have a hundred nominations for a position uh, because people have refused to reach out for each other. That is the essence of democracy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is about influencing and being influenced. Now, one of the reasons why the ANC is said to have survived 100 years, um, 30 years in exile, um, 20 years now almost in, in governance, is your ability to adapt to changing conditions. Um, but if one looks at the way in which um, some of the reports are coming out around how leadership uh, contests are being handled, you get the sense that some people are involved in a zero-sum game. Um, and the ANC has always been able to, to have a center that coheres. Are you confident that come December that the party center will actually hold? Uh, I don't know if there, there's any indication that make people raise the question of the center holding. Uh, we're going to that conference. Well, there's go. some people who say that President yeah, Zuma, for example, shouldn't be returned to power. And there are other uh, yeah, provinces yeah. that says he must. Yeah, yeah. So how do you deal with the situation yeah, like that? You know that uh, in 1952, when uh, President Lutul was elected, 
uh, history tells us that at one point there were 10 candidates. Uh, they came down to two and Lutul was elected. Now, I don't think that was a sign that the center was not holding. When Gumede was uh, voted out in 1930, uh, he came there and began to introduce pro progressive policies and actually penned out a class contestation and class character of society. And he was removed for that reason. And you can go through that history. When there's a contestation, it can be that Senda is not holding. Is that the organization is dynamic and diverse. But the last time when you voted out an, in, uh, an incumbent, the organization had um, a splinter group formed. We yeah. had the Congress of the People Party formed. Um, if you look at the contestation going toward Manga Hung, mm -hmm. what are the prospects of those people not getting what they want out of Manga Hung, leaving the African National Congress and forming another party? One of the experiences we had on the COPE experience is that people leave out of anger. When, they, when they're out there, they begin to feel the chill and the coldness of being out of the ANC. Many of them trickle, trickle back. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a number of them who have returned to the ANC. Uh, we, you can't have control over emotions of people. It's even more difficult now that the ANC is open. It's a big organization. It's not like a tightly run organization that operates under conditions of illegality, where commitment is absolute. Different. We're now over a million members. And others come here, they don't understand the depth and the history of the ANC, and they will all be loyal to individuals. The danger of that is that they become loyal to individuals and cult of personality also emerges in the process. And those are issues that we must confront as a well. When you had a previous NEC meeting, there was an acceptance that what happened in the run-up to Pulukwane, which was in 2007 when you went to your elective conference, that you can't um, do those things again, as in people, the organization cannot be that divided, it cannot be that pitted against um, itself. Um, what makes you sure that the mistakes of Pulukwane is not going to be repeated as we go to Mangal? The biggest mistake is when you make it a field day for everybody, where leaders, because they are contesting, get insulted. That's not the issue. The issue is that anybody can be connected. It's a tradition and culture of the ANC to hold regular uh, conferences and hold regular elections. But it is not the culture of the ANC to actually be derogatory and insulting when you have a preference. That is what characterized the run-up to, to Pulugwana. That must be eliminated. Final question, SG. Um, the, qu the question of slates. The deputy president has spoken out against it. He says it kills internal democracy in the party. What is your view on, on the issue of slates? It's not the deputy president who have talk, spoken against slates. It is the leadership of the ANC. That slate politics make the organization poorer because good comrades who happen to be in a slate that is seen as wrong get ignored for being nominated by a particular grouping. The ANC membership must be able to nominate and elect any leader that is good in their eyes in the ANC. That is not a deputy president's position. It is the position of the leadership of the ANC. Mr. Mantash, that's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much for your time. That's it for Political Exchange. Join me again tomorrow night for another edition of the program. I'm Karima Brown. Goodbye.